So, I have been on a mission to find the worst interview ever. And you are in luck. The worst interview ever is by presidential hopeful, Vice President Kamala Harris and Vice Presidential Hopeful Governor Tim Walls on CNN with Dana Bash in a diner scripted. This interview was so bad that various news outlets from liberal progressive to conservative all across the board have been calling this interview horrible. But anyways, I'll let you guys be the judge of this interview. We're gonna watch the video. We're gonna comment on it in between at the major parts. So hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna hit this detonate button on this so we can check out this law firm of Kamala Harris, Tim Walls, Pelosi, Willie Brown, Obama, and Associates. Let's go. If you are elected, what would you do on day one in the White House? I think sadly, in the last decade, um, we have had in the former president someone who has really been pushing an agenda and an environment that is about diminishing um, the character and the strength of who we are as Americans, uh, really dividing our nation. And I think people are ready to turn the page on that. So Newsflash Kamala, it's day 1685 and you still ain't done nothing but ride around in the bus because you like buses. Stop at diners and walk around with your emotional support animal, Tim Walls. But I wonder what you say to voters who do want to go back when it comes to the economy specifically because their groceries were less expensive, housing was more affordable when Donald Trump was president. She says this. And I'm very proud of the work that we have done that has brought inflation down to less than 3%. The work that we have done to cap the cost of insulin at $35 a month for seniors. Donald Trump said he was gonna do a number of things, including allowing Medicare to negotiate drug prices. Never happened. We did it. We did it, Joe. No, 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 no. You didn't do it. And you said blah, 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 blah. You didn't say nothing. To maintain Bidenomics is a success. I maintain that when we do the work of bringing down prescription medication for the American people, including capping the cost of the annual cost of prescription medication for seniors at $2,000, when we do what we did in the first year of being in office to extend the child tax credit so that we cut child poverty in America by over 50%, when we do what we have done to invest in the American people and bringing manufacturing back to the United States so that we created over 800,000 new manufacturing jobs, bringing business back to America. What we have done to improve the supply chain so we're not relying on foreign governments to supply American families with their basic needs, I'll say that that's good work. There's more to do, but that's good work. Oh, that's good work? In 2019, I believe, uh, at a town hall, you said you were asked, would you commit to implementing a federal ban on fracking on your first day in office? And you said, there's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking, so yes. In 2020, I made very clear where I stand. We are in 2024, and I've not changed that position, nor will I going forward. I kept my word, and I will keep my word. What made you change that position at the time? What do you have to say to that? Let's be clear, my values have not changed. I believe it is very important that we take seriously what we must do to guard against what is a clear crisis in terms of the climate. And to do that, we can do what we have accomplished thus far, the Inflation Reduction Act, what we have done to invest, by my calculation, over probably a trillion dollars over the next 10 years, investing in a clean energy economy. What we've already done, creating over 300,000 new clean energy jobs. That tells me, from my experience as vice president, we can do it without banning fracking. In fact, Dana, Dana, excuse me, um, I cast the tie-breaking vote that actually increased leases for fracking yeah. as vice president. So I'm very clear about where I stand. And what? Why did the Biden-Harris administration wait three and a half years to implement sweeping asylum restrictions. And Donald Trump got word of this bill that would have contributed to securing our border, and because he believes that it would not have helped him politically, he told his folks in Congress, don't put it forward. He killed the bill. 
<laughs> so you're telling me former president Donald Trump has more power than you do as vice president sitting right now. You are the vice president right now. You are the vice president right now. And you're telling me that Donald Trump had influence on a part of the government right now. So what does it say that if you become president, Donald Trump won't have power over the part of the government? So what are we doing here? We're making up stuff, pushing the blame on other people. Was it me, mommy? It was him. Of course you're going to push off blame just like a little kid. Cause there was a debate. You raised your hand when asked whether or not uh, the border should be decriminalized. Do you still believe that? What did she say? I believe there should be consequence. We have laws that have to be followed and enforced that address and deal with people who cross our border illegally. And there should be consequence. And let's be clear, in this race, I'm the only person who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations who traffic in guns, drugs, and human beings. I'm the only person in this race who actually served a border state as attorney general to enforce our laws. And I would enforce our laws as president going forward. I recognize the problem. You say you're the only person with that experience. Well, Donald Trump is also the only person with the experience of being president. Checkmate, mic drop, all of that. And why are you flip-flopping? Even that immigration activist is mad at you for that. And now it has become about criminality, about drugs. And, and in this interview, she really accepted that. And then she was asked, Generally speaking, how should voters look at some of the changes that you've made? CNN even gave you an alley oop. And should they feel comfortable and confident that what you're saying now is going to be your policy moving forward? They wanted to be like, how can we kind of like wash this pig and present it and say, good pig? How can we do that? How can we do that? Dan, I think the, the, the most important and most significant aspect of my policy perspective and decisions is my values have not changed. Your values have not changed. They haven't, because remember, you're talking about you got to stay woke. You got to stay woke. So, yeah, your values have not changed. Yo, y'all let me know. Y'all let me know what you think. The, the most important and most significant aspect of my policy perspective and decisions is my values have not changed. You mentioned the Green New Deal. I have always believed, and I have worked on it, that the climate crisis is real, that it is an urgent matter to which we should apply metrics that include holding ourselves to deadlines around time. Chat, did you guys hear what she said? She said, a deadline around time it, do you i i don't know maybe i'm missing something but do any of you out there listening to the sound of my voice know of any other deadline that is not connected to time not plugged into time i want to know does anybody know a deadline that is not connected to time we did that with the inflation reduction act we have set goals for the united states of america and by extension the globe around when we should meet certain standards for reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, as an example. That value has not changed. My value around what we need to do to secure our border, that value has not changed. I spent two terms as the Attorney General of California prosecuting transnational criminal organizations, violations of American laws regarding the passage, illegal passage of guns, drugs, and human beings across our border. My values have not changed. Will you appoint a Republican to your cabinet? And she said, Yes, I would. Of course, you're a politician. You're going to say that. Anyone yes, in mind? I would. No, no one in particular in mind. I don't believe that. Do y'all believe that? Do y'all believe it? Let me know, because I don't believe it at all. What I want to ask you about is what he said last month. He suggested that you happened to turn black recently for political purposes, mm -hmm. questioning a core part of your identity. Which she switched and flip-flops all the time, depending on who she's speaking to. And let me explain. A lot of times, if you're black and something else, what do you say, chat? I know I have some people out there who are black and something else. What do you say? You say, I'm mixed. You don't say I'm Indian on a certain network because they ask you, are you Indian? You say, I'm actually mixed. I'm Indian and black. 
I'm Indian and Jamaican, I'm this or that. So if Trump goes, hey, I don't know what she's going by these days. Some days she go by Indian, sometimes she go by uh, black or sometimes she go by Jamaican. I don't know. Why are y'all even, anyways, check out what she said. Any same old tired playbook. Next question, please. Same old tired playbook. So why don't you answer the question? Let's talk about some foreign policy uh, issues that would be on your plate if you become commander in chief. Uh, President Biden has tried unsuccessfully. With, you know, Israel, Hamas, anything serious like this. Is she gonna do anything different? We want to know. For example, would you withhold some U.S. weapons shipments to Israel? That's what a lot of people on the progressive left want you to do. Uh, let me be very clear. When they say let me be very clear, it's a lie. I am unequivocal and, and unwavering in my commitment to Israel's defense and its ability to defend itself. And that's not going to change. But let's take a step back. October 7. 1,200 people were massacred. Many young people who were simply attending a music festival. Women were horribly raped. As I said then, I say today, Israel had a right, has a right to defend itself, we would. And how it does so matters. Far too many innocent Palestinians have been killed. And we have got to get a deal done. So what's your stance? Vice President Harris, you were a very staunch defender of President Biden's capacity to serve another four years. Right after the debate, you insisted that President Biden is extraordinarily strong. Given where we are now, do you have any regrets about what you told the American people? I mean, I don't know. This is this is gonna be a surprise, a shocker, what she's gonna say. What did she say? No, not at all. Not at all. I have, um, served with President Biden um, for almost four years now, and I'll tell you, it's one of the greatest honors of my career, truly. Um, he cares so deeply about the American people. He is so smart and, um, and loyal to the American people. And I have spent hours upon hours with him, be it in the Oval Office or the Situation Room. He has the intelligence, the commitment, and the judgment um, and disposition relative to what we're going to do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look. By contrast, the former president has none of that. Then Kamala was asked, well, the past decade also included you. What did she say? The last decade, of course, the last three and a half years has been part of your administration. I'm talking about an era that started about a decade ago, where there is some suggestion, warped, I believe it to be, that the measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down, instead of where I believe most Americans are, which is to believe that the true measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you lift up. That's what's at stake as much as any other detail that we could discuss in this election. So now, Kamala, and walls are playing the victim. They're saying, oh, poor me, and that person is beating up on everybody and being mean. No, 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 no. Y'all are beating up on people, and now you're trying to be like, I'm joyful, I'm nice. We see, we see. We've, we've turned this thing inside out, and we see. It's not about joy. It's not about niceness. Because with that 90% turnover that Kamala Harris has, obviously a little bit of anger has been coming out. And then they go on to like, oh, how did Harris find out about Biden dropping out? When he called you and said he was pulling out of the race, mm -hmm. what was that like? And did he offer to endorse you right away or did you ask for it? It was, um, it was a Sunday, so here, I'll, I'll give you a little too much information. Go for it. <laughs> There's no such thing, Madam Vice President. Um, my family was staying with us, and um, including my baby nieces. And we had just had pancakes and, you know, Auntie, can I have more bacon? Yes, I'll make you more bacon. And then we were going to sit, we were sitting down to, to do a puzzle. <laughs> 
And the phone rang, and it was Joe Biden. And, um, and he told me what he had decided to do. And um, I asked him, are you sure? And he said, yes. And um, but that's how I learned about it. So the only thing puzzling about the situation is the fact that you're just chilling, playing a puzzle while the nation is in peril. That's puzzling. And Biden said yes. He said in a clear way. Okay. Hmm. I just, I don't buy it. Do y'all buy it? And what about the endorsement? Did you ask for it? it? He was very clear that he was gonna support me. So when he called to tell you, he said, I'm pulling out of the race and I'm gonna support you. Well, my first thought was not about me, to be honest with you. My first thought was about him, to be honest. So then Tim Walls got a chance for his 10 minutes of fame. And Dana Bash didn't hold back with the questions. Dana Bash did, I gotta give her credit. She did ask some hard questions, not all of them. She didn't really dig deep into the uh, DUI or anything like that, but she asked some hard questions. She asked about Tim Walls misspeaking. You said that you carried weapons in war. Tim Walls has never been in war. Did you misspeak as the campaign has said? Yeah, I said we were talking about, in this case, this was after a school shooting, the ideas of carrying these weapons of war. And uh, my wife, the English teacher, told me my grammar is not always correct. But He's only been in support operations in Italy. So his time in the service was mwah, chef's kiss. I, I won't apologize for speaking passionately, whether it's guns in schools or protecting of reproductive rights. Uh, the contrast could not be clear between what we're running against. The vice president's position on this has been clear. And um, I think most Americans get it if you've been through that. Um, I don't think they're cutting hairs on IVF or IUI. I think what they're cutting hairs on is an abortion ban and the ability to be able to deny families the chance to have a beautiful child. So instead of actually answering the question about IVF, Tim Walls goes on and says, uh, I don't know about the IVF or the IUI or anything like that, but what we need to focus on is the Republicans are trying to ban abortion. So he has a chance to talk about the miracle of life in making babies. Instead, he decides to talk about taking babies. Awesome coach. Instead of Tim Walls, addressing that DUI arrest and talking about it head on, pun intended, he evaded it like how he evaded the cops last time and going over 40, drunk, blaming it on tinnitus. I have tinnitus. It don't make you speed. It just makes your ear hurt. He evaded that question and started talking about how people know his heart. He said, So uh, I think people know me. They know who I am. They know where, uh, where my heart is. And so if I know somebody's heart, if I know your heart, that's how I'm going to vote? That's how I'm going to judge? That's how I'm going to believe you? That's how I'm going to trust you? No, if, if we just know somebody's heart, what, what is this? Is this the X-Men or something? Are we like Professor X or something? Look, I'm in the Professor X chair. I know his heart, vote Democrat. Uh, dun, dun, dun. No, 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 not happening. Not happening. I'm not buying it. Are you buying it? Let me know if you're buying it or not, for real, because I'm not. I just, I've had enough. I gotta get out of here, but you know what to do. Hit that subscribe, I'm gonna hit this detonate button, and we out.